Every year there's a movie that I'm hyped to go see. The movie this year is Hereditary. Hereditary is coming off a lot of buzz and a lot of hype, which can be a scary thing even for a horror movie. This movie is being compared to The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby, two very iconic movies, and especially in the horror genre. So that's something big that Hereditary has on their shoulders. How do they execute it? They execute it perfectly. I recommend the movie, by the way, if you want to go check it out. If you're checking out this video before seeing this movie, go watch this movie. I'm not kidding. Go watch this movie. It is an experience to behold, especially in a cinema full of people. Anyways, let's talk about that wild ending. Before we can get into ending, a quick rundown about what this movie and what happens. The movie basically deals and is centered around this grandmother's death. Her family now has to cope with that death. And this death brings a lot of different stuff onto them that they might have not asked for. The term hereditary fits in perfectly. The family, they consist of her daughter Annie, Annie's husband, and their two kids. Now, one of these kids is Charlie, who was Grandma's favorite, even breastfeeding her at a point. Yeah, this family is a little off. Now, Charlie is sort of disturbed and sort of keeps to herself, and she is a little weird, I guess you could say, at points. The other son, Peter, he is more reserved and has sort of a bad relationship with his mom, this is because his mom tried to kill him at points, and it's something I'll get into later. I guess the husband, Steven, is just there, and he sort of acts as the viewer, just taking everything into account, putting his two cents into some of the stuff we see, but besides the point, that's all he does. Front and center is Annie, who is pretty much losing it at this point, and it seems that Annie was never really all there to begin with anyways. And after her mother's death, they are played by certain events that certainly deal more with the ending being as big as it is. And one of those is Charlie dies in this movie halfway. Yes, the girl who was centered around the trailer dies halfway. And that's something that took me by surprise, took audience members by surprise. Especially because she got her freaking head decapitated. And that was just like, what the fuck? I'm serious. Somebody screamed in my theater. That's how insane that was. And then we later see the family being more shambles because this happened because of an accident she had with Peter in the car. And the mom and Peter's relationship is pretty much gone at this point now. So she finds a sort of like a home with this woman she meets at one of these recovery groups, Joanne. Joanne one day tells her about making a seance or ritual. And this ritual would have her be able to speak to Charlie's spirit. She did this with her dead grandson and Annie now is like, you know what, I'm going to do it. She goes home, she does it with her husband and Peter, and ultimately gets possessed by Charlie, which freaks out Peter, and Stevens had had enough. He's just like, let's, let's just stop. The next day, however, Peter is played by a sort of weird stuff happening at school, from seeing the shimmering light that Charlie was also seeing right before her death, to being possessed, and even seeing Joanne at a point, before he ultimately ends up hurting himself by slamming his head on a desk. While all this is happening, Annie is uncovering the truth about what exactly is going with this occult shit. She finds out that her mom was part of this sort of group that was trying to bring forth this king from hell named Paimon. And we see various pictures of Annie's mother with Joanne as well. So Joanne is no stranger to Annie's family. She then finds her mother's body is now in her attic and it's decapitated and it's pretty much rotting at this point. As soon as Steven gets home after picking up Peter... She shows him and he's like, what the fuck? Why didn't you call the police? He starts to suspect that maybe Anne is behind all of this and digging up her mother's own grave. Before he can get to any conclusiveness to this, Anne he's like, you need to burn Charlie's sketchbook. This is the only way that this evil will stop. And he's like, why would I do that? And she's like, this is it. Trust me. But after you do so, I'm going to burn. That's why I can't do it myself. He's like, this is crazy. He doesn't want any part of it. So she's just like, I'm going to do it myself then. She throws it in and then he burns alive and dies. Peter awakens after all of this is happening. So he's unaware of what just happened. He goes down. He sees his father's dead body. And then he sees a naked man standing behind him before he's chased by his mother into the attic where we see that Annie's mother's body is gone. And there's sort of a ritual candlelit going on. Before we can even comprehend what's going on, we hear this really like nerve-wracking noise that gets under your skin, and it's Annie seesawing her head off before Peter sees a group of dead bodies just watching him and her do this, and he just jumps out the window and he dies. We then see that shimmering light possess Peter, and then his body reanimates, and then we see Annie's headless corpse go up the treehouse, and then Peter follows 
or whatever is possessing him now. Once he enters the treehouse, we see a group of naked worshippers there, and they're worshipping a dummy with Charlie's severed, rotting head. It gets creepier, trust me, because bowing down in front of it is Annie's mother and Annie decapitated as well, bowing down to whatever they want to call this. And then we hear a familiar voice, it's Joanne, and she's crowning Peter and says, everything's okay now, Charlie. And then... Everybody hails Payman. End of movie. What the fuck just happened and where's the nearest priest are your first thoughts after watching this movie. As we said, the, the grandmother was into some occult shit. And she was going to do this ritual with her group where they would bring forth the king of hell. Payman. And the only way to bring him forth, as we saw Annie read about it, is through a male host. And I think this can also be a time that we can look back and see that the grandmother has been trying to do this for a long time. As Annie points out, she had a brother who committed suicide because he said he heard voices in his head. This could mean the grandmother was trying to use him as a host first. And for a fact, we know that the grandmother knew of all this was going to happen because one of the notes that Annie finds when the movie first starts is that note of her mother telling her that all these sacrifices that are going to be made are going to be for the better for everybody and we're thinking what sacrifices but by the end of it we were like oh those are some fucking sacrifices and so i believe that charlie was always meant to host payment soul until they were able to find another male that would be able to host the soul and this is why i think the grandma even breastfed charlie because i think she was trying to feed the soul into charlie because this is her king because as we see at the end of the film her picture has the word queen above it and we see her in those photos in that wedding dress being showered in gold coins so i think she was ritualistically married to this sort of whatever it is you want to call it and i think that this is why she was so keen on finding it the host and i think she was the only one that would be able to find it because it had to be somebody in her family to do so with her being the queen now payment does bring forth riches and knowledge to this group so they would do whatever it takes as well to bring this forth and i think this is all like i think charlie dying by decapitation was no accident i think all of that was set in motion after the grandmother died and the group really wanted it all to happen and i think this is a reason we also see that joanne had pictures of peter in her um table in a sort of ritualistic manner as well because she needed Peter's body because this is the line of heritage from um, the grandmother. So it had to be somebody in that line. And there was nobody left but Peter. And as to them calling both Charlie and Payman by the same name, and I think that has to do with both of the souls being one. I think at this point, it it's just become one. Because I think throughout the whole movie, Charlie and Payman were the same like person. I think... It was just payment was more suppressed being in that body and not at his full strength. As to oppose now that he's in Peter's body, he's pretty much free to do whatever he wants. So yeah, by the end of it, the group finally gets what they wanted. They were able to complete the ritual. And as we know, payment is a collector of heads. So they needed to have those decapitations happen. And Peter ultimately did die and his body was there for the taking. And that's it. That's it with the movie. It's pretty straightforward. But you really start looking back into things and you start to make more sense of what was actually happening and what actually was the truth behind it all. As for Annie, I think her sleepwalking was just her trying to make reason of this. And I think her wanting to kill Peter throughout was not more malice, but more of trying to save him from whatever this occult group was trying to do. And I think this is the reason it happened with her sleepwalking because... In reality, she couldn't come to do this, but if she was sleepwalking, it was just her subconscious acting. So, anyways, there's a lot to unravel with this movie. I'll be making another video about that as well. What are your thoughts on Hereditary, however? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to know. Like, we could actually discuss this movie for a while, and we still can't get nowhere. But, anyways, as always, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and share all that good stuff. As always, I'll see you next time. Stay positive.